start thinking about the topic as early as possible during your master education. Select a topic that really interests you. Do not forget to select a topic that is possible to investigate. This means it has to be realistic within the given time frame. It also has to be accessible. It may be very difficult to get access to, for instance, the secret service, criminal organizations, etc. Formulate the aim and research questions in a precise way. The research question has to be linked to the aim of the thesis. The aim of the thesis and the research questions must emanate from the empirical material or theoretical perspective. Limit your topic. It's not possible to investigate everything. Choose an aspect to focus on. A master thesis consists of two major parts, gathering material and writing your thesis. Gathering material aims at building knowledge. You start with an extensive literature survey, reading, for instance, doctoral theses, scientific articles and official documents, etc. Choose material from authors within your field of study. Don't forget, Lund has an extensive database. Make use of this. A master thesis consists of the same parts as a bachelor thesis. Starting with an abstract, the abstract contains your aim and purpose, your methodological and theoretical approaches, your findings and keywords. The abstract is followed by a table of content. The introduction contains your topic aim and research questions, an explanation of the relevance to the discipline and the disposition of your thesis. This chapter has two aims. The first one is to give an extensive overview of the literature written about your chosen topic. The presentation should be argumentative and show that you can make an independent and qualified assessment of these studies. The second aim is to position yourself in relation to previous research. You can choose to enhance and develop previous research, or you can choose a different methodological or theoretical approach, or your aim may be to fill a gap in previous research. As far as methodology is concerned, we usually talk about quantitative and qualitative approaches. These are based on different epistemological and ontological assumptions. Discuss the general aim of your chosen methodology and explain how it fits the purpose of your study and discuss its pros and cons. When writing your master thesis, it is not advisable to only use textbooks. Focus instead on studies by other authors or researchers. Methods consist of interviews, informal talks, participations, observations, questionnaires, etc. Whether you use quantitative or qualitative methods, it is imperative that you transparently account for how you have used them. Discuss how you use your methods, obstacles you encounter and how you deal with them. Discuss your biases. Researchers come with the luggage. There is no such thing as an objective researcher. Biases might be, for instance, class, gender or age. If you use a quantitative approach, use quantitative concepts, such as, for instance, respondent, validity or reliability. Commonly used qualitative concepts are, for instance, informant, interviewee, perspective from within. It is highly recommended to use more than one method. Discuss ethical issues. 
how you deal with the empirical material, written transcripts, as well as the right of the people included in the research. In this chapter, you critically reflect on the theories you use. Discuss pros and cons. Also, discuss the theories you haven't used and explain why your choice of theories are the most adequate ones for meeting your purpose. Use original literature. If you are referring to Habitus, use Bourdieu as a reference. This is the core of the thesis. Here you relate the empirical material to the theories and concepts you have presented in previous chapters. The purpose of the analysis is to show originality and independence in relation to the theories you have used. You should discuss ways in which the analytical findings confirm, refute or complement the theories highlighted in the theory section. In the summary, you present the conclusions of your findings. This chapter may also contain a discussion about further research. In that case, title the chapter Summary and Discussion. At the very end of the thesis, you present a list of references and possibly an appendix. Remember, the main part of your references needs to have disciplinary links. If your major is political science, for example, use references from that discipline.